Hello Vikings and welcome back to another wishlist video as you would probably already guessed from both the thumbnail and the format. Um, <laughs> it is currently slightly past 2am for me because um, I have been, well I won't say I've been lazy but I I did a bit of war thundering and then I went and had a break and some ice cream and ended up having a four hour nap and suddenly it was very late. Um, so yeah, <laughs> let's get into this one. Um, War Thunder wish list. Uh, we are on to Germany and we are doing the light tanks first. Um, first up, we got the Sunderkraft Versug, probably butcher that, 222. Two, two. Um, it's one of the most iconic uh, armored cars of World War II, um, and it's the second iteration of the uh, light recon vehicle for Germany. Um, it's very similar to the uh, 2 to 1 squeeze ball we have in game. Um, it's the same chassis, uh, length of 4.8 meters, width of 1.95 meters, height of 1.7 meters, and a weight of 4 tons, uh, powered by a Horch 3.8 liter V8 with 89 horsepower and a top speed of 80 kilometers an hour. Um, different from the one we have, this version is armed with a, well, a fully rotating turret, first off, uh, fitting a 2cm Kavak 30, um, same gun as on the first of the Panzer IIs, and a 792 millimeter MG34 coax, uh, literally the same turret as we already have on and some of the premiums in game. Uh, it had a crew of three, one in the hull, two in the turret. If I'm not mistaken, it might be the other way around. I can't remember. Um, anyway, yeah, that would be the first one for today. Next up, we got the Syndica Fasuk 250-9. Um... The uh, 250 was developed as a uh, light troop carrier, um, basically APC. Uh, how it did end up becoming very common in recon roles, either carrying uh, recon detachments uh, as, as an APC or being converted into its own recon vehicle version. And uh, that's kind of the one I want, the Slash 9. Um, the chassis is 4.56 meters long, uh, 1.95 meters wide, 1.66 meters tall, and weighs 5.8 tons. It is powered by a Maybach HL42 TRKM engine, 99 horsepower, and a top speed of 76 kilometers an hour, almost at 79. Um, the armament of this particular one is the, uh, well, the same turret as before. Uh, however, this one has the 2 centimeter Kavak 38, uh, the same as the second of the Panzer IIs. And, again, an MG-34 coax. Something a bit more unique, probably. We got the Syndicat Fesuk. 231 6. The 6 rad is 6 wheel. Um, there was also a. Actually, I'll get to that. It's an interwar armored car. Um, started development in the late 20s. Uh, saw service through the initial stages of World War II. Uh, it was later revised for an 8 wheeled version. Um, but uh, I, I want the six-wheeled. It's more unique. Uh, the eight-wheeled version did kind of end up being the basis for the Puma design. Um, uh, the chassis, it is 5.9 meters long, 2.2 meters wide, and 2.9 meters tall. It weighs in at 8.3 
tons, so it is actually rather heavy. Uh, it was also classified as a heavy scout vehicle. Um, powered by a Wissing Nag L8VG engine, 70 horsepower and a top speed of 85 kilometers an hour. The armament, uh, again, we got, we got a unique turret this time around. Um, but we still got the uh, one two centimeter Kavak 30 and the one MG 34 coax. And uh, well, unlike the two previous ones with crews of three, this one has a crew of four. Next up, we got what you're probably here for if you uh, click through because of the thumbnail alone. We got the Penta 2 Lutz. Um, it's a Panzer II in little more than name. Um, the looks is actually its own design, granted derived from a modification of the Panzer II, uh, the Panzer II G to be exact. Uh, it had new suspension, which was supposed to increase the mobility of the Panzer II, but only 12 were built and, uh, most of those were kind of dismantled again before the looks was developed um doesn't share any <laughs> any commonality other than it has similar suspension design it is 4.63 meters long 2.84 meters wide and 2.21 meters tall quite a big little tank and it weighs in at 11.8 tons. Uh, powered by the Maybach HL66P. 180 horsepower. Quite beefy for something this light. Um, and a top speed of 60 kilometers an hour. Um, armament, we once again got the 2 centimeter, a uh, Kavak 38 this time. And a MG34 coax. Uh, and we got a crew of four to in the turret to in the hall. That is, however, already it for the World War II stuff. Um, we are onto some early post war stuff, namely this the Schutzen Panzer Spa Panzer 11 2 Curse. Quite a mouthful. It was designed and performed a double duty, uh in West Germany in the 50s. Uh, this little vehicle served both as an IFV and as a recon vehicle uh, in different attachments for each role. Um, it was replaced by the Mada we already got a few of in-game. Um, the Mada IFV, obviously, <laughs> in the IFV role. Uh, and, well, kept on the recon roll for a bit longer until it was replaced by another vehicle i got a bit further down on my list so we will get to that um it is a 4.5 one i know it says millimeter but i know it's meter <laughs> meter long vehicle um 2.28 meters high uh, wide not high and 1.97 meters tall there we go uh weighs in at 8.2 tons so quite light um powered by a hutchkiss engine 164 horsepower and a top speed of 58 kilometers an hour and uh armed with a single 20 millimeter hispano Azusa 820 l85 next up with picture i'm not quite happy with now that i see it in full screen uh but oh well um the spa pencer sp1c it was developed on the chassis of the previous vehicle um as you can probably tell it has somewhat the same shape uh however this was i mean th this was really just a um a project intended to provide the uh, Schützenpanzer recon version with some anti-tank capability and have a recon vehicle that's able to defend itself a bit better. Um, however, only one prototype was ever actually built. And, uh, well, yeah, this is a picture of that one prototype. 
Um, the specs, uh, surprisingly, it is only 4.42 meters long. Uh, it is 2.3 meters wide, 2.28, 2.3. That's probably just a um, rounding off. And 2.39 meters tall. The turret really adds some. Weighs in at 8.92 tons. It is still powered by a Hotchkiss engine, this time with a 195 horsepower and the same top speed of 58 kilometers an hour. Armament is a 90 millimeter Makara cannon and a MG42 coax, uh, still 792 millimeter, and a crew of three, one hull, two turret. Next up, we got the Spa Panzer Lux. Um, this is the vehicle that replaced the Schutzen Panzer in the recon role. Um, quite similar to the Mata, really, uh, in a lot of ways. Um, the new wheeled vehicle was uh, or is faster and also fully amphibious, unlike the Schutzen Panzer. Also shares a trait common with a lot of the uh, World War II armored cars, um, namely stuff like the Puma, uh, in having a second driver in a rear-facing position, um, allowing it to reach the maximum speed in both directions. It is 7.74 meters long, quite big, uh, 2.98 meters wide, 2.84 meters tall, and weighs in 19.5 tons. It is powered by a Daimler-Benz OM403A engine, uh, producing 300 horsepower, and reaching a top speed of 90 kilometers an hour on land, well, on roads and an amphibious top speed of 10 kilometers an hour. The armament consists of a 20 millimeter Rheinmetall Mark 20 RX202 cannon and a 7.62 millimeter MG3 coax. And it has a crew of four. And uh, that concludes the German vehicles for now. Um, however, so we already have some Argentinian vehicles in the German tree, um, and uh, I don't have any Argentine light tanks, but I do, however, have some Brazilian light tanks, so let's get into those. Starting off with one you've probably seen pictures of before. We got the X1A. It is an upgrade to the long outdated M3 Stewart. Uh, they were acquired from the US after World War II. Uh, most nations either scrapped or sold off vehicles like this. Um, however, Engesa, a uh, Brazilian company, arms company, had already shown um, that they were able to upgrade World War II vehicles to suit the modern battlefield with the M8 Greyhound. So, uh, they were allowed to take a shot at the M3 Stewarts, and uh, this is the result. It is 6.36 meters long. Um, that might be the A2 version, it has an elongated hull. Uh, 2.4 meters tall and 2.45, sorry, other way around, 2.4 meters wide and 2.45 meters tall, weighing in at 90 tons. It is powered by a Saab Scania DS11 engine, 300 horsepower and a top speed of 55 kilometers an hour. Uh, armed with a 90 millimeter cockerel, low pressure, and a... MG34 or 42 coax. Uh, I have a feeling that that's probably more going to be an MG3 because 762 instead of 792. Um, as well as being able to mount a 12.7 millimeter on the roof as a crew of, well, depending on version three or four. Next up, we got something 
Quite a lot more modern. Should probably have put these in a different order. <laughs> uh, a modern modular. Actually, I should start with the name maybe. The Guarani VBCI. Um, modern modular vehicle intended to replace the uh, older Urutu and Cascavels. Um, which are, well, there's versions of both on my list and uh, I'll be getting to those next. Uh, the IFV version would be fairly similar to um, some of the other top IFVs we got in game already. Uh, it is 6.9 meters long, 2.7 meters wide, and 2.34 meters tall, weighing in at 16.7 tons, powered by an Iveco Cursor 9 engine with 383 horsepower and a top speed of 110 kilometers an hour. Uh, the armament is, I mean, I think it has a coax as well, but all I've been able to find is a single 30 millimeter Mark 44 Bushmaster 2 and a crew of three. Now, one of the things it was supposed to replace is this, the Uruto IFE or anti-tank. Um, it is a rather obscure vehicle. Uh, it is an amphibious armored personnel carrier, the Urutu, uh, modified with a one-man turret giving it some IFV-like traits. And uh, thanks to Nico for finding this picture for me. Um, they actually shelved it for now until I could find a picture, but he swooped in with one. It is 6.1 meters long, 2.85 meters wide and 2.12 meters tall. Uh, that is only the hull, though. Um, oh, it is a fairly small turret, so it shouldn't be that much taller. And weighs in at 14 tons. Again, just with the hull, the turret would add a little bit more. Um, powered by a Detroit Diesel 6V 53T. 212 horsepower and a top speed of 90 kilometers an hour and 8 kilometers an hour in water. The armament consists of a single 25 millimeter autocannon, not sure which one exactly, and it is able to carry either tow or Milan ATGMs. Lastly, we got a bit of a three for one. Um, we got the Cascavel in three different versions, the one, two, and the three. Um, it was initially designed during the Vietnam War, uh, when the availab availability of old surplus US M8s became limited and it was intended to recreate the design, however, the armament of the original, uh, the Cascavel 1, as shown here, was already obsolete and uh, other versions were quickly made to replace it with better armament. The specs, this is of the 4, I believe, or the 3, one of the later versions. 6.29 meters long, 2.59 meters wide, and 2.6 meters tall, weighing in at 12 tons. Powered by Detroit Diesel 6V53N, um, 212 horsepower, and a top speed of 100 kilometers an hour. The armament. Um, we got the Mark 1 on the left. Uh, armed with a 37mm M6 cannon, as well as a 7.62mm coax and, well, the ability to mount a 50 cal on the roof. Um, Mark II, in the middle, we got a 90mm Defa 1, well, Defa F1, um, and a single 7.62mm coax, uh, probably able to fit another 7.62 on the roof, as the tire turret and gun assembly is just taken from the uh, AML that we already have in game in the French tree. And the Mark IV, um, 
no, the Mac 3 and up, really. On the right, we got a single 90mm Engaser EC90. Um, that is a license built um, Cockerel Mac 3 and a custom turret with a single 7.62mm coax and a 7.62mm on the roof. And uh, they all have crews of three, one in the hull, two in the turret. And uh, with that, I'll leave all three up. Um, with that, that rounds out the German light tanks. Um, I might have to do some double ups, or a double up, at least. Um, for some of the other categories but as always uh let me know what you think if you think i've missed something let me know or hop over on my discord i got a channel just for that purpose um yeah don't forget to like comment and subscribe and hopefully i will see you in the next one